All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are live on the platform. This is our CEO Leadership Live on Monday night with MWR Financial. My name is Gerald W. Parker. Truly an honor to be here with you tonight. There's some updates in place tonight that we're going to review. Grab a pencil and a paper. You're going to want to take some notes on this. This truly affects your business for the better. So I strongly encourage you with this time you've got left, send out those last minute texts, make those last minute phone calls. You want your team on this call. You want your team on this platform tonight. This is going to be an urgent update with our CEO tonight. So I'm excited to be a part of the platform with you. Let's see who we've got out here with us um, on the platform tonight. We should load this thing up. I'm anticipating 50 states for sure tonight without question, because this is information you absolutely need to enhance the growth of your MWR financial business. These updates are critical, uh, but they have been uh, proven already to be effective in just a short time that they were implemented. So we're going to get into it tonight. We got Miss Lovey Sullivan, Tampa, Florida. Welcome to the platform, ma'am. Who else is out there? All right, Detroit, Michigan, Miss Underwood, uh, welcome to the platform. Here we go, Daytona Beach, Wendy, welcome to the platform. Who else is out there on the platform with us? Miss Cassandra Wooten, Goldsboro, North Carolina, welcome to the platform, ma'am. Who else is out there? Miss Crockett, El Paso, Texas, welcome to the platform. Absolutely. Who else do we have on the platform tonight? Let's keep going, guys. We've got several states to cover. Miss Flores, uh, Texas, again, welcome to the platform. Mr. Jonathan Jones, always a pleasure, sir. Douglas, Georgia, welcome to the platform. Lakeland, Florida. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez, welcome to the platform. Nina Caldwell, Windsor Mill, Maryland, welcome to the platform, ma'am. Wake Forest, North Carolina, Mr. Daryl Banks, welcome to the platform, sir. All right, guys, Miss Sims, Decatur, Georgia, welcome to the platform. Who else is out there? Let's get a few more before we transition over. Ms. Hayes out of uh, Beacon, New York, welcome to the platform. All right, we got Tallahassee, Florida in the house again. Welcome to the platform. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, Carmela, welcome to the platform. James Mays, Indianapolis, Indiana. Welcome to the platform, sir. Always a pleasure to have you. Chesapeake, Virginia. Ms. Walton, welcome to the platform. All right, guys, let's get a few more before we transition over. There he is, Mr. Austin. Uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Welcome to the platform, sir. Good deal. Who else is out there? Let's give a few more. Marvin G., Columbia, South Carolina. Welcome to the platform. Ms. Thomas out of Mississippi. Welcome to the platform, guys. Give me one or two more and we'll transition over. Falmouth, Kentucky, Lisa Ross, way to go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this is going to be exciting. I love it. Hey, let's just stop right there. I'm done. This is awesome. Hey, God, listen, a star-studded cast. I'm telling you, we got people up here that you don't normally see, but it's so exciting to see how involved our corporate team is as it relates to what we're doing to make this whole process better for all of us. Once again, my name is Gerald W. Parker. I want to welcome everybody to the platform this evening. To all our Hispanic leaders and team members, we want to say buenos uh, noches and uh, thank you so much for joining the platform. So let's get right to it. My job is to bring on our guest speaker tonight. This gentleman you've heard from several times before. Every time he's on this platform, I mean, he he's always bringing something that that finds a way to better this this company and to give us a, an opportunity to do more for more for more people and at the same time enhance our ability to generate income as we grow our mwr financial business so tonight we're going to talk about enhancements that are happening with our credit restoration process which is going to be a good thing i'm telling you the, i've seen these uh, um, uh, enhancements that are that are going to be put in place it's going to make things easier for you it's going to make things easier for our consumers all the customers that you got, just we're going to enhance this process to make it even better. But that's the heart of the CEO and founder, Mr. Brian House, the gentleman you're about to hear from. He always finds a way to make it better for all of us. So that's what I love about him, his level of commitment to the growth of this business. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit about this guy. I've known him for 17 years. I not only get a chance to call him my business partner, but my friend, but I've never met a man with such compassion for the average everyday person, the level of commitment he's made to the growth of this organization, to your future and mine, as well as our children. It's unheard of. It's absolutely unheard of. Somebody willing to reach back and help the masses succeed. And that's where the whole development and concept of MWR Financial has come from. Now, he's built four multi-million dollar companies, so he absolutely has it down to a science. He knows this process and knows how to do it. Now, with his... Uh, uh, you know, his leadership abilities. He, he's helped make MWR Financial the fastest growing financial strategies company in the United States. So, I mean, I could go on and on and on all night, but listen, without further ado, please help me welcome to the platform, the CEO and founder of MWR Financial, Mr. Brian T. House. Hey, buddy, how are you? If it gets to the better, my friend, I won't be able to stand it. Good to see you. Go Wildcats, Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're playing tonight. It's their first game of the season. So I thought I'd represent tonight and uh, and actually wear my UK uh, shirt or pullover. But uh, hey, listen, 
uh, things are about to get even be better, Gerald. You just said that. And, uh, and so uh, get ready. You're going to lose your mind. But uh, at the same time, uh, I, I'm excited about tonight. Uh, I well, love it when we're able to improve things, make things better, uh, help our, our members get better results. And, uh, and so tonight we wanted to kind of go over the email that we sent out talking about the enhancements that we're doing to the credit restoration program, uh, which is obviously a free benefit of our financial uh, membership, our MWR financial membership, and, uh, and how we're improving that, that service to help our members get better results. And, but before I go into that, Gerald, I want to talk about what prompted this. Okay. Because okay. I think everybody needs to be aware of why we made this decision after 31 years of running the same process uh, that we, I felt like we perfected. And obviously we have thousands upon thousands of testimonies on our testimonials page of people that have received unbelievable results in re in regards to what we do uh, when it comes to credit restoration and uh, for our members. And so we want to continue that. But what we did notice was over, uh, it, <laughs> I see Leisha's on here, my sister. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. Martina, do not post any comments from her. Okay. All right. It. It, will, it will throw me off because she's doing it just to mess with me. All right. But, uh, at the same time, and guys, that Alicia Ross, that's our chief operating officer. She happens to be my sister, uh, which that is not why she's in this position. That would have been a reason not to hire her, Gerald, her being my <laughs> sister. She was hired because she's highly qualified to do what she does. And uh, she is there, no doubt. Uh, but at the same time, uh, please, Martina, don't allow those to pop up. But let me get back to what I was talking about. Uh, we, we noticed over the last several months, and, and a lot of this was happening during the pandemic period because the credit bureaus, the way they were handling disputes, the way they were responding, uh, one, they were given a little leeway by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau because of COVID. And then we went through that period where we implemented a system very similar to what you're seeing that we're implementing right now and we noticed that we got a lot better results right. for our members because they were being very lax on responding because they were given so much leeway by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Well, that has continued to kind of bleed over so much so that we noticed over the last several months that there were a large segment of our members that we had submitted disputes for uh, with the credit reporting agencies, we waited the 30 working days, which is approximately 45 days or six weeks for those members to get a response. And we noticed that their responses were either very delayed coming two months later, uh, or they weren't getting a response at all in some cases. Uh, and it's a requirement of the credit reporting agencies whenever a dispute is initiated with them that they are required by law to send the consumer a corrected copy of their credit report showing what's been corrected or deleted on their behalf or what's changed, the new information uh, that's being reported on their credit file. And so that's a requirement of the law. And so for them to violate that law uh, seemed like it was kind of far-fetched. So we were trying to figure out what the actual challenge was with that. We resubmitted for several of those clients. So we would reinitiate, change things up, you know, try to do things a little different to be able to get them a response. Uh, and then in October, late October, we noticed that uh, Representative Jim Clyburn, uh, James Clyburn, out of South Carolina, uh, had actually done a, uh, a piece with CNBC and talking about how he has requested an investigation by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau against the credit reporting agencies, TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax, because they are not properly responding to disputes filed by the consumer or by third parties. Now, I'm going to explain this to you. I want you guys, if you get, ever get a chance, go look this up. You can look it up on CN. CN uh, BC's website, uh, cnbc.com. 
and you can actually, it's under the uh, Your Money section of CNBC, and it's under TransUnion Equifax Experian may have violated credit repa- reporting rules, uh, Rep. Jim Clyburn says. And so you can, you can actually read this for yourself, but what had happened is, is that the credit reporting agencies were kind of cherry picking what disputes they were going to investigate and what ones they weren't going to investigate. And they were using criteria that if they felt like it came from a third party, which let me explain this to you guys, it is not against the law for you to have a third party to dispute information on your behalf. That's why the Credit Repair Organizations Act was actually put into place to uh, set guidelines for third parties to be able to dispute in your behalf, okay? That's why that law was put into place, the Credit Repair Organizations Act. It's to actually govern, you know, companies like ours that assist the consumer with credit restoration. So a credit bureau can't just willy-nilly decide, oh, well, this looks like it's coming from a third party, so I'm not going to address the dispute. Doesn't work that way. And whenever we dispute dispute anything in your behalf, it's disputed. You've given us a limited power of attorney. You've agreed to us disputing this on your behalf. Okay. So we never put anything on there that says, oh, it's coming from MWR Financial. You've authorized us to dispute the negative information on your account that you feel like is, uh, you know, misleading, outdated, obsolete, or that can no longer be verified by the credit reporting agencies. Okay, you've authorized us to do that in your behalf. Okay, and we have proof that we follow the Credit Repair Organizations Act and do things according to the law, or we would have never won a class action lawsuit in federal court where we have a federal judge, Judge Joseph M. Hood, at a Michigan federal court that has signed off as to our compliance with the Credit Repair Organizations Act in regards to our process and our contracting. Okay. So we have court precedents that says we do it the right way. So for a bureau just to say, oh, well, I'm not going to do this because the postage looks like it's not coming from where the consumer lives. Okay, it's not coming from where the consumer lives. Oh, I'm not doing this because that letter is not signed. And I feel like this is coming from a third party. Oh, this looks like a similar dispute to one that was previously filed, okay? So I'm not going to investigate that. They use, and I I encourage you to read this article because it was outlandish what they were claiming as to why they were not honoring disputes, okay? And literally, we're talking almost 50% with some of the bureaus were not being responded to. Now, that is not fair to the consumer, The reason it's not fair to the consumer is because that information, if you have information that is erroneous, misleading, outdated, obsolete, or that can no longer be verified within a re or outdated, uh, (coughs) that information has to be deleted or corrected in order to make sure that your score is being reflected properly. Mm -hmm. What we do gives the bureaus the opportunity, kind of a checks and balance systems system to right the wrongs or to correct the errors that they have so that they don't have to worry about litigation for reporting uh, information that is inaccurate, misleading, outdated, obsolete, or that can't be verified. Okay? So that is the reason why we help people exercise their rights under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, as well as the Fair and Accurate Credit Transactions Act, while also complying with the Credit Repair Organizations Act to make sure that you and your credit scores, your credit reports are in the best shape possible, but they are reflecting accurately according to the law that have been, has been put, laws that have been put into place to protect you as a consumer. Okay. Now, this makes me mad, and you brought, you guys can probably tell when we have major private industries, TransUnion, Equifax, Experience, Experian. These are not government agencies, guys. These are private entities that make their money by selling your information to other parties. That's how they make their money. They make their money by selling 
your information to other parties. And if they're selling information that is less than perfect, less than perfect, that could be costing you hundreds and even thousands of dollars on your interest rates, your down payments, your car insurance, your homeowner's insurance premiums, your ability to be able to obtain certain types of employment. All of these things can be affected by an inaccurate credit report or low credit scores. Okay. And that's not fair to you. So to just say, I'm not going to respond because I feel like this came from a third party. I feel like this is a template. I feel like, you know, I don't feel like doing this today and I'm just not going to honor the dispute. Okay. That's wrong. And so we're going to hold them accountable. And the best way to hold them accountable was for us to change our process. Okay. Implement our a new process that holds them accountable while also providing an unbelievable checks and balance system, uh, simplifying the process, being more transparent with you as the member. So you get to see everything that's been disputed uh, through each of our rounds of processing. And I'm going to educate you on this too, guys. We do three different rounds of processing in most cases, unless someone has less than eight negative items on their credit file. If you have more than eight negative items on your credit file, we're not going to address everything all at one time. Why? Because of the same reasons we're talking about right now. Bureaus can deem a dispute as frivolous if you go after every single item on a consumer's credit file at one time. Okay. Now we don't break it down into multiple disputes in order to extend the process. We do it because we know that's the best way to get results. Okay. So we take it, your credit report, analyze it. Our experts analyze it, which are phenomenal. Our staff is phenomenal at what they do. They will analyze your reports. They determine the high impact items, medium impact items, and the low impact items on your credit file. Okay. We address the high impact items first the medium and low risk items, either on a second or third round of processing. We do not do it all at once in most cases, okay? That's for your benefit, not to extend the process, okay? Just so you know. Uh, but for 31 years, we've helped hundreds of thousands, literally over 200,000 consumers, you know, improve their credit scores or get their credit scores back into the best shape possible. And so well, I think we know what we're doing. OK, but uh, at the same time, and I say that humbly, uh, but at the same time, uh, we want to make sure that you're getting results, that we're getting uh, past these little scenarios that the bureaus are implementing unilaterally on their own without approval from the governing bodies. OK, not following the Fair Credit Reporting Act, not following the Fair and Accurate Credit Transactions Act, not maybe listening to the guidance or input from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Okay. And Governor, or, or not Governor, but Representative Jim Clyburn, Democratic Governor or Democratic Congressman out of the state of South Carolina, actually requested that they be investigated for this. And had we not caught that article, we still could have been banging our heads against the wall, trying to figure out why are they not doing this or having to initiate a class action lawsuit against the reporting agencies, which I will tell you, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that, but we will. We will. Because you guys are that important and the information that not for our benefit, we won't get a dime out of it. But I can tell you right now, if when we, which this prop, uh, process is being implemented effective immediately, okay? And I'm going to tell you, if by implementing this process and correcting those things that are mentioned in that article, if we determine that the bureaus and you determine that the bureaus are not responding properly to the, the, the disputes that you are sending out, you're going to know the time and date that you sent it out. You're going to know what's been disputed on there. You're going to know whether you got a corrected copy within 30 working days. And we highly recommend you send your disputes via certified mail with requiring a signature so that you can document 
that they did receive your information. And if they do not respond during the time frames that are laid out in the law, which is 30 working days, approximately 45 days to six weeks, if they are not responding in a timely manner with a corrected copy of your credit reports, we want to know that. We want to know that. Because if that's the case, we have thousands upon thousands of members that we will compile a list and our attorneys will assist, assist in filing a class action lawsuit against any bureaus that violate that. Now, that's not a threat because I know this is public, okay? Uh, and we made this public for a reason because we don't believe that our members should have to tolerate that or be treated like second-class citizens by a major corporation that's making millions and billions of dollars off of selling their information and not even willing to make sure that it's being reported accurately, okay? And so we will help you. We will help our members initiate a class action lawsuit if the credit bureaus do not do what they're supposed to do. So I'm making that public. I'm making it clear. We're not playing games here. Uh, we have done everything by the book for over three decades, three decades. And, and I, I'm not going to see our members hurt by the fact that uh, these companies uh, think they're holier than thou. Okay. And uh, cause that's not how the system works. That's not why the laws were put into place. So with that, this new process is pretty simple, very self-explanatory. Uh, when you go into your back office, first of all, let me just say this. I'm going to read through the email. Hopefully you guys read this, but <clears throat> steps one and two of our three-step enrollment process. And, and Martine, I'm actually going to share my screen. So if you can, uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, we'll do the entire screen here. Bear with me share. So we'll share my screen and I'm going to pull this up. Not that I'm going to pull this up. Okay. And uh, I'm going to pull up. This is under cashback guys. When you log into your back office, if you click on restore my credit, okay, that's going to take you. Well, no, it's not. Let me go back here. Bear with me. I'm going to click on this. Okay. All right. Now I'm back in there. Okay. Back into your membership. Uh, click on restore my credit. And when we click on it, it's going to take you to uh, the restore my credit page, uh, which has all your videos, everything on how to, how the system works. By the way, these videos uh, should be updated by tomorrow. All of our videos on there, our consultation video, our what to expect next video, see how uh, restore my credit works. All those videos should be updated. OK, uh, our step one of our process will and two will remain the same. Nothing's going to change on that when somebody enrolls. Uh, but on step three, instead of having to upload uh, your driver's license, Social Security card or utility bill for ID and address verification purposes, uh, guys, you're just going to have to uh, upload now just your credit reports. For you or, or your spouse or both. Uh, so you're going to be able to just upload your credit reports. We don't need any of the other supporting documentation, okay? Uh, because you'll be sending that out now, uh, which means all you have to do is copy your driver's license instead of scan it and upload it along with a utility bill, a bank statement, a social security card, all those things. That'll shorten the process for you to be able to enroll. Uh, it'll make things simpler on that end. And then once we receive those, if you'll look at this, uh, you'll see in the upload center on this uh, on this page, you'll see that where your upload happens. So right here, it says Brian House. I uploaded my credit reports right here via, and I turned them into a PDF. Uh, and the status of that is completed, meaning the review analysis, everything is completed in regards to uh, your credit reports. Then what you will see is you will see your dispute letters begin to populate once our staff has created your dispute letters. And anytime you see anything that says print and mail, all you do is you click on that document, okay, the ones you haven't done in the past, 
it, unless you want to delete them, you can do that after you're done printing them and sending them. I don't recommend it. I recommend you keep a log of it. Okay. But you click on it, pull it up, you download it, print it, uh, and you actually uh, will take that information and, or your letters and you'll follow these instructions at the bottom. Print and mail instructions. Click on each link in the document column of the upload table above with the status print and mail. And then it gives example. Uh, and then print the, number two, you're going to print the dispute letters. Okay. Then you're going to sign each letter and mail them along with a copy of your driver's license, social security card, and a utility bill or bank statement for ID and address verification purposes via certified mail, which is our recommendation. You do not have to. You can send it via regular mail. Make sure you handwrite your envelopes if you send it via regular mail with your address, your return address on it and the Bureau's address on it so they don't think it's coming from a third party. And with, with and if you do certified mail, do it with signature required and you're going to send it to the corresponding credit bureaus shown on each letter using the addresses listed below. You'll see you've got TransUnion's address, Equifax, Experian. We'll always make sure those are up to date, okay, so that you're always sending it to the correct place, all right? And if you don't want to go to the post office uh, to pick up certified or anything, just click on uh, this link right here for stamps.com, uh, USPS certified mail. You can actually print out your certified mail uh, information there and you can send it directly from your house or apartment or wherever you live. Okay. Now you want to make sure number four, you retain, if you do this, your certified mail delivery confirmation and signature of receipt. So together we can hold the credit reporting agencies accountable. Okay. And that's how simple this process is guys, uh, guys, uh, nothing complicated about it. So I'm going to stop sharing real quick and I'm going to go back, uh, but that'll show you how, how we're simplifying that process. Now, if you can, Martina, bring Gerald back up real quick. There he is. Gerald, listen, you've been through this process with us before. You've seen, I know we've got so many new people in the company, literally thousands that have joined over the last, you know, six months, four months. Uh, but uh, I, I think I think this is a, I don't think, I know from what I've even seen in the past that this is a very effective way of doing this. Uh, and and you, you tell me what you think, Gerald. You've got a huge organization. What, what's been your feedback on it? Well, listen, I, I, I love this because this puts more control back into the consumer's hand because the biggest question has been, uh, you know, yes, uh, you, you're disputing on my behalf, but the bureau's dragging their feet, not in get it, got not getting me a response. So now the question is, you know, what was disputed? Why is it taking so long? When did you send the letter out? Even though we are documenting that in our back office, now the consumer or the customer has the ability to print uh, the dispute letter that was created for them. So no, no time involved in developing that. It's done by professionals, right? You print that thing out. Sign off on it, uh, include the identification that you're going to need. And then, I, and I'm like you, I want to certify it because I want a record of it, right? And I'm going to send it now to the bureaus. And, and so I'm in total control. I've got clear documentation on what was sent, when it was sent, what was disputed, and I can track it from there. So that's, that's good stuff. This gives us a lot more strength. But again, this gives us an opportunity to hold the credit bureaus accountable, Brian. I love this. So this, again, gives the consumer more control over the process. I love that part about it, sir. Yeah. And, and, but I want to say this, too, that, I mean, your level of commitment of always finding a way to make this thing better because, I mean, you, you're a result-driven person. You always have been as long as I've known you. And when we're not getting the results that you're expecting, uh, you'll find a way to make whatever transition or change is required in order to get those results. When you, you yeah, I, mean, I think you mentioned about 50% of that client base uh, wasn't getting a response or they were getting a late response. So let's be proactive here and and, and figure out why this is happening. I think Mr. Cl uh, Clyborne has helped us figure pieces of that out with the, with the uh, possible investigation, but we now have an opportunity to hold them accountable and the consumer is directly involved in that accountability process because that the, the, they're sending the dispute letters themselves that we've created for them. 
Yeah, I, and I'm going to say this, Gerald. Uh, you know me; I'm not a political guy, but I can. I, I will say this: I was impressed that you know Senator Jim Clyburn actually uh, requested to initiate uh, an investigation against the credit reporting agents because you don't see a lot of uh, a lot of political figures, congressmen, and stuff step into that arena. But uh, he he was hearing it from his own uh, supporters. Right. He was hearing it from his own supporters, the challenges and and think about the scale that he was hearing it on in order for him to have to request that investigation to happen. OK, so this is widespread. It wasn't just happening to us as a company. It's happening to everybody as a company out there that's in this industry. And uh, and, you know, Gerald, another thing, too, guys, there is nothing we do that you can't do by yourself when it comes to credit restoration. The advantage is having a team of experts that take the time and burden away from you of having to do it, that know what the laws are, okay, and know how to help you exercise them uh, and put together disputes that are questioning the right things, the validity, the accuracy, the ownership of those accounts in a specific order that has been proven over 30 some years to get results. And so, you know, that's the only thing that's different uh, about us and you doing it yourself. Literally, we tell this to people all the time, uh, you know, but at the same time, when you've helped over 200,000 clients uh, get results uh, and I know we're all busy, we're all busy, you know, and so taking the time to do this, to follow up, to make sure that everything has happened in the way it needs to, Having a system like this and people in your corner that are willing to go to work for you, go to bat for you, uh, I think is is huge, you know. But I also don't think anybody should be out there paying hundreds of dollars to participate in credit restoration programs because credit restoration programs, uh, you cannot charge uh, fees in advance of performing agreed services, according to the Credit Repair Organizations Act. So if any company out there is asking you to pay hundreds of dollars for credit restoration, uh, you need to check them. You need to check them because uh, that is a clear violation of the Credit Repair Organizations Act. And I've never agreed with it. And that is one of the reasons why we won our class action lawsuit uh, in federal court. Uh, in regards to compliance to the Credit Repair Organizations Act. It's also another reason why credit restoration was added to a existing membership with MWR Financial without passing the cost or raising the cost of that membership when it was added uh, and without passing the cost on to the consumer, making it or any of our existing or future members making it a free benefit of our membership. So we literally charge nothing for credit restoration. If we did, we would have had to increase the fees, okay, for our membership, but we didn't do that. We absorbed the cost for compliance purposes, okay? And uh, and so with that, I'm excited about this. I hope you guys are excited about it. And Gerald, I'm gonna leave on a different note, okay? okay. Uh, one, if, if you guys, please read the email that we sent out, first of all. It's also a post, uh, so you can see the post. Uh, so pay attention to the email. Also, whenever your disputes have been uploaded, okay, you're going to receive an email notifying you of that. But check your membership portal. Check your back office. Check your upload center frequently, frequently. OK, so you can stay on top of it. Do not let a dispute letter set in your back office for a week or two weeks. Our staff is going to work extremely hard to get your stuff out quickly. And we are working right now to work on people that came in over the last week, week and a half in order to be able to get them on this new platform, instead of sending them out knowing they were there was a possibility they weren't going to get results. So our staff is pay, playing catch up right now. Okay. Give us a week to 10 days. We'll be fully caught up because they're amazing. Okay. 
and they will get your print and mail stuff up there. Everything is, is going to be great. But at the same time, take it easy on them. Don't call and ask them 50 million questions. Let them do what they got to do. Okay. Know your stuff is being taken care of. If you have a question, submit it via email to support at mwrfinancial.com. If you, if it's urgent and you can't wait, let them get caught up on this because we literally have about 9,000 letters that are being processed. 9,000. I don't know if you know what kind of manpower that takes, but it takes a lot yeah. to be able to get that done. And we're up for the task. OK, so we'll get it knocked out uh, and we're excited about this. The other thing I'm going to tell you that we're excited about, guys, is the direction that we're going right now as a company. There are things that are happening in the back and Gerald, you kind of know some of this. So I see that little <laughs> cheesy grin coming up and, and I'm just going to say this, Gerald, you and I had a conversation today. Contracts are in the process of being negotiated. Uh, some major enhancements uh, coming up that are going to put even more money in our members pockets uh, from both a passive income perspective as well as our opportunity, uh, which I think is phenomenal. Um, and I, man, this is hard to do. I hate when I do this because I want to give it all away and I can't. Okay. Hey, I, I, What's I'll your thoughts on what you know, Jerry? Because you sit on our leadership council and we've had these discussions. So I, I, I'll help you without giving it all away. Honestly, don't. <laughs> so, uh, no, no, I, I won't. I won't say anything. But here's what I want people to understand: that on this platform, I'm part of this company. The whole concept, the whole premise in the development of MWR Financial was your commitment to help people make wealth real. Again, yep. I always hear you say this is not about getting rich quick. This is about getting rich right. Yep. What you have implemented or what you're working towards is going to position people to win in their financial life in a major way. We talk about inheritance. We talk about legacy. This is your shot to get that done with what's being put in place. And, and this is the most real thing. And I, I've, I've, you know, I've experienced pieces of it already, what we already have in place. But these yes. other pieces that you're talking about, Ada, is going to guarantee not only my financial security for the rest of my LIFE, but my children sure. and even their children yes. and even their children. We're going four or five generations deep on this thing. And what I love about MWR Financial, Brian, I don't care where you are in your financial life. This program is designed to meet you right where you are. I don't care if you're a minimum wage worker right now. If you're committed to positioning yourself to win financially, this is the platform that can get you there, bar none, without question. It's over. And there yeah. won't be anybody else, or there surely is not anybody else in this country that has had, had the, the heart to want to really help the average everyday person win. See, this is our chance now. If there ever was one, I hear people talk about a wealth transfer happening. <laughs> We're sitting in the middle of it, and, and we got the upper hand on the majority of the population because, again, we've got the tool systems and expert and a CEO who's committed to, to assuring that, that we live our best life. It's, it's awesome, man. It is incredible. I'm, I'm going to add this, Gerald, because I'm, I'm sitting here just trying to think of ways to, to share this. But our, our event in February, which looks like it's going to end up being in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, guys, uh, which we're excited about. Uh, we've got a lot of growth happening in South Florida. Uh, and, but, uh, and we've had all of our Atlanta teams and teams across the country have said, let's go someplace warm in February, yes. not, not someplace <laughs> cold. And so uh, it looks like that information should be up. You can already register for that event. Uh, in February and guys take advantage of it because I'm going to tell you, I, I really feel like the announcements that we're going to make in February and Lord willing. And so pray for us, please. I, I don't know what your faith is or who you pray to, but whatever you do, be in prayer for your corporate staff, uh, for myself, uh, that I, my, I can, make sure my negotiating ability and, and contracting ability and stuff uh, is, is represented properly for us uh, so that, that uh, these things all come to fruition. Uh, we already know some of it. 
uh, is in place and will happen. Okay. But I will tell you the conclusion of what we do uh, at this event will fill in all of the missing pieces to the Make Wealth Real movement. It, these will be the missing pieces. These will be the only, we're, you can already do it with what we have. We already have the best and most needed program on the planet. The, we have the best. There, there's not an opportunity out there, comp plan wise, uh, supply and demand wise, uh, especially in this economy or any economy, people always need to know how to do better with their money. They need to be able to know how to make more of it, how to keep it, how to make it work for them, uh, especially when things like this are happening. Uh, this will be the defining moment of MWR Financial. Everything you build from now, from, from the beginning to that point in February is going to literally, I, I, I promise you this, I promise you this, just one of the announcements we make could literally double or triple the size of your organization in 30 days. In 30 days. I'm not talking about six months or two years. I'm talking about if you have a team in place and you want as big a team as possible, one, because of a potential comp plan enhancement. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to say potential comp plan enhancement, all right, as well as service additions or enhancements that you're going to see happen. <laughs> you have the right amount. You have the team in place. Whatever you have, I'm telling you, you get the word to them. They're at this event. You're looking at potentially doubling or tripling. And I don't care if you have... 1,500, 2,000 people in your organization. I'm talking 30 days, potentially doubling or tripling the size of your organization just because of the announcements and the work we're going to put in between now and February to make these things come to fruition for you guys, for you guys, okay? And, uh, and that is the best way I can emphasize it uh, without letting the cat out of the bag. Uh, but, uh, and, and there may be some of it we let out of the bag early because there's some of it. There may be another grandfathering scenario that happens that may come up that uh, we have to let you know that if you don't do these things by this period of time, you, you may not be grandfathered in, which is fine. You'll still benefit from it anyway. But at the same time, you want that. You want that. Okay. And so, Gerald, I'm done. That's, that's <laughs> all I'm giving away. Hey, uh, listen. I keep going. I'm going to spill the beans. And uh, no, and I'm and telling you, you guys, I, I, it's been hard to sleep uh, because of what's happening behind you, the scenes. And, I, and I'm going to give all glory where it's due. Uh, again, I don't know who you pray to. I don't know if you pray at all. And, uh, and I respect whoever you worship. But I'm going to tell you what. God has his hands on this company. At least the God I believe in, I, I believe He has His hands on this company, and uh, and I don't believe these things just come into place without some type of divine intervention. Because we are so blessed that people want and are willing in this industry to partner with us to bring things to the table, new things and established things that are the some of the best in their fields, some of the best in their fields. And it's all, all glory goes to him, but it's all for you guys. It's all for you guys. It's not for me. It's not, it's not for our corporate, well, our corporate staff. I will say it's for them because it helps them, you know, that creates longevity with our business, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about it. And I love you guys. I appreciate you a bunch. Didn't mean to get on this big tangent, Gerald, because this was about <laughs> something else uh, tonight. But I can't stand myself right now. So. I want I, I want to say this. I'm reading the comments here, 
And everyone, <laughs> everyone on the platform has sworn to secrecy. They <laughs> promise not to tell <laughs> anybody if you'll just keep talking. <laughs> just tell it. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm, I'm literally breaking a sweat trying to hold it back, Gerald. That's the problem. So I understand, sir. I got to get well, off listen. here before I do it. Well, th okay. this is our time. And uh, yeah. truly, I, I, I have to agree with you that I truly believe and have always believed that God has his hand uh, on this business. Truly, th this is the time for God's people to win. And uh, a platform has been created because of your obedience uh, and establishing MWR Financial. You could have went in a hundred different directions. Uh, but but you were obedient to to what you felt that God was calling you to do, and here we are today, ladies and gentlemen. This this is going to be exciting. I mean, if you if you like MWR Financial right now, you're going to love MWR Financial. Not only will you, but your children will, and even their children. That's how big this is going to be. Thank yes. you, Mr. House. You're the best, my friend. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Keep your mouth shut too, please. <laughs> okay, I, won't say uh, I know it's killing you too. But uh, I can't hold water. <laughs> yeah, yes, you can. Yes, you can. I, I won't do it. <laughs> I know you won't. I know you won't. But listen, guys, I appreciate you all so much. Uh, we are we are blowing up and, and growing. And, uh, and it's all because of you guys. And I'm so excited to see so many people's incomes increasing, especially during these times. This is not the norm. There are businesses struggling. Uh, so many companies are already starting to cut, cut back because of the recession. Uh, you've got interest rates that are going up. Literally, they've almost tripled in the last 12 months. In the last 12 months, 401ks have lost over 25% in the last 12 months. In the last 12 months, inflation is at an all-time high. Uh, all these things are happening right now. And you have the answer, the solution to everybody that is being affected by it, which is everybody in this country, everybody in this country, you have the solution. Let's go out there and share it. Let's make a difference. And uh, the great thing is, is we get to get paid for making a difference. And, uh, and I hope to see you guys make more money than you can ever spend. All right. Because I know the more money we put in good people's hands, the more good things we'll do with it. So appreciate you guys. Love you. Have a great rest of the week. And if you need anything, you know how to reach us. Support at MWRfinancial.com. Gerald, thank you so much. Martina, thank you as well. I'm behind the scenes is for all you do. Greatly appreciate you. Have a great night, everybody.